Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Amy Burkett. We begin tonight by revisiting a part of Charlotte's history that isn't pretty, but important to remember. Back in the 50s and 60s, segregation was the status quo across the Southeast, and Charlotte was no exception. In tonight's Remember When, Carolina Impact's Danielle Koser introduces us to a local woman who at 15 found herself at the center of the racial divide. Up in the morning and out to school. The teacher is teaching the golden rule. Projects in hand and backpacks in tow, children gear up for another day of learning at Irwin Academic Center, where students of all races sit side by side at their desks. But it hasn't always been this way. This used to be the site of Harding High, where Dorothy Count Scoggins made history as the first African-American student to attend the all-white school on September 4th, 1957. She was just 15 years old. When I got out of the car that morning, of course, the streets and the yards were lined with people. And as I proceeded the walk uh, to the school, which was about two blocks, then the crowds began to move in closer to me as I was walking on the sidewalk. Dorothy held her head high as she walked toward the school. Her slender 5'10 figure at the center of the storm as students threw things, shouted racial slurs, and spat at her. Nearly 60 years have passed, and Dorothy still remembers every detail of that day, her family sending her off to school. We had prayer before I left that morning for school. The blue plaid dress she was wearing. My grandmother had made for me. My grandmother was a seamstress. The feeling of hatred radiating through the crowd. Walking into a building with spit dripping from the bottom of your dress, which is very humiliating. She was moving. If somebody bumped her or anything like that, she didn't pay any attention. She just kept going. On the other end of the camera, former Charlotte Observer photographer Don Sturkey, who says he knew what he'd be up against when he got his assignment that morning. I was uh, uh, being assigned to uh, go to Harding High School, and I knew if there was going to be any trouble in Charlotte, I knew it was going to be at Harding. The photos quickly made their way across the nation, offering a snapshot of the racial divide across the Southeast. Three years earlier, the U.S. Supreme Court ruled segregation in public schools unconstitutional. But there was no move to integrate schools in Charlotte until Dorothy and three other students set out to test the landmark ruling. Dolores Huntley, Gus Roberts, and his sister, Gervod, integrated three all-white schools across Charlotte that morning. Dorothy was the only one met by a mob of protesters. And they were bumping her and spitting on the back of her. I remember being ignored by adults especially people that consider themselves to be educators. Now, the reality is to show that people were not ready for change. There was a lot of vitriol there, there was a lot of anger there, but uh, you have to admire the courage of a 15-year-old to, to be willing to take that kind of a risk. After four days, Dorothy's parents withdrew her from Harding High and sent her to a public school in Pennsylvania to finish out the school year. Documentary producer Steve Crump spent months studying the integration of Harding High School leading up to the release of 9457, a documentary detailing Dorothy's experience. You have to look at the reality of what was happening in Little Rock, Arkansas at the time. It was the very same week, and what people were doing, they were crossing the color line. Bill Tucker remembers working as a guidance counselor at West Mecklenburg in the 1960s when the school integrated. Most of us had grown up in a traditional southern community where we thought we were separate. To me, students were students. Students across Charlotte started integrating in the 1970s following the Swan versus Charlotte Mecklenburg Board of Education Supreme Court ruling requiring the city to desegregate schools. Bibi McGee's daughter was one of the first white students to integrate West Charlotte High School, which opened in the 1930s as an all-black school. We were worried about her safety, what was going to happen. There was so much bitterness on both sides, it, it was sad to see how, how bad it was sometimes. A change gonna come, oh yes it will. Dorothy eventually moved back to Charlotte, earning a degree from Johnson C. Smith University. 
She spent most of her nearly 40-year career working in early childhood, helping children. That which happened to me, I was going to ensure to make sure that it didn't happen to another child. Now she lives in the neighborhood where her childhood home once stood, within walking distance of the old Harding High. Those four days at Harding High School changed my life. It's hard to believe that 15-year-old girl in the center of these photos just celebrated her 74th birthday. Dorothy and Don reunited years later. This time, they both stood on the same side of the lens. Up on the, up Decades the later, she holds on to the memory of that morning, but she doesn't hold on to any bitterness. Sometimes it's hard for people to understand how can you forgive someone that did the kinds of things that they did to you, but I have a forgiving spirit. I think when you look at Dorothy Counts, uh, you look at somebody who has never given up. Uh, you look at somebody who remains the eternal optimist in terms of making sure that the right things get done to serve the students in this county. Dorothy hopes we can all learn a lesson from what happened on September 4th, 1957, when four African-American students paved the way for integration across Charlotte. These photos shine a light on one young woman's strength, highlighting the power of the human spirit. For Carolina Impact, I'm Danielle Koser reporting. Thanks so much, Danielle. The library at Harding University High School has been renamed the Dorothy Count Scroggins Media Center in her 